my name is Dinah Jeffries and I'm here today to tell you a little bit about my book The Separation. It's the first book that was published in the UK and there are now three in the UK, the second of which became uh, a UK number one Sunday Times bestseller. Um, the Separation is now published in Dutch, which I'm very happy about. And um, first of all, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about it and then read an extract. It's set in 1950s British Malaya, which is actually where I was born and where I lived as a child. Um, it's about the separation of a mother and her two daughters. In fact, it's dual narrative, so the reader all the time knows more about what's happening and where both sides are than the characters themselves. So the question isn't so much where are they, but the question is how on earth are they ever going to get together again? And in fact, will they ever get together again? So now the extract I'm going to read is, um, first of all, from Emma's side of the story. She's the daughter. And she's sort of 11, 12, going on 15. Um, and this is at a point where the car has broken down on the fringes of the jungle. And so the father, this is before they're separated, the father has gone off to try and get help. Oh, change my specs so I know what I'm reading. Okay. I knew about terrorists in the jungle. They'd tie you to a tree and chop off your head as soon as they clapped eyes on you then put it up on a pole. I squeezed my eyes shut, terrified of seeing a head grinning at me. Mum started humming. Soon it would be completely dark and the stars would come out, then it'd be better. Though on the subject of terror, Mother didn't know that I'd seen even worse at the Waxwork Museum. Just past the shrunken heads, there was a children prohibited section. I didn't stay. Only long enough to see tiny waxwork models of white women and children pinned to the ground, still alive, their painted red mouths wide open in a scream. Coming towards them, driven by a Jap, was an enormous steamroller normally used to flatten tarmac roads. Only this time it was being used to flatten those people. When I got outside, I was sick in a rubbish bin. Japs were bad. Our parents said so. Though the people in the jungle now, the, one they, the ones they called terrorists, they were Chinese. I didn't understand. Our armour, Mei Lin, was Chinese, and I loved her. Why was it that Japs were bad before, but now Chinese people, though only some? It didn't make sense. Our car was stuck well off the main road and almost where the bandits were, but even deeper in the jungle lived the spirits who ate children, our gardener, whose mouth was red from chewing beetle, told us, If you ever get lost in the jungle, watch out for the Hantu Hantuan, he said. He narrowed his eyes in a scary way. But it was confusing, because he never told us what they actually looked like. Emma, can you move your arms and legs? Mum asked. I wriggled them to show I could. Fleur? Fleur tried, and could move her arms and her left leg, but when she moved the other, she cried out. It's probably bruised. Get her shoe off before it swells, Emma. I did it, though Fleur struggled. I don't like it. Where's Daddy? I told her she had to keep quiet and that Daddy had gone to get help. She sniffed a bit, made a few moany noises and then stayed still. It was evening time, but in the distance the sound of an explosion, explosion broke up the quiet. Mummy, we both yelled. Shh, it's nowhere near us. The sky started to turn brown, and white mist slid down from the mountain top. But at least we weren't properly in the hills, because add a bucket, add a pyre! Where there are hills, there are swamps, and they would swallow you whole.